Australia, land of the fair go, where everyone is treated equally, regardless of race or religion. Well, the investigation you're about to see puts the lie to that. Although human rights laws make it illegal to discriminate on the basis of a person's skin colour, our special report reveals blatant prejudice throughout the country. With hidden cameras and the assistance of several Aborigines, we tested the level of racial tolerance in everyday life. And as you watch Grey March's story, consider how you would react faced with some of these situations. Meet Jimmy Donovan and Clary Cameron, middle-aged, respected family men and Aborigines. They agreed to help in a secret investigation to see how much difference skin colour makes in Australia. For an Aboriginal to be accepted half as good as a white fella, he's got to first of all be twice as good. I'm not racist myself, and I know, but I know there is racist within this town. I know it. To do this, we're travelling right across Australia to big cities and small towns. And we won't just hear second-hand stories about discrimination, we'll see it first-hand. We've wired up several Aboriginal people with hidden cameras and we'll send them into a variety of situations. We begin in Jimmy's hometown, Kempsey, New South Wales, to see if he can find a place to rent. He does the rounds of the real estate agents. I'm making inquiries to see if you've got any uh, houses for rent. And immediately, there's the shake of the head that Jimmy expected. Nothing at all, eh? No, I advertised um, about 10 days ago, I advertised three or four properties, but they were all gone. I see. An hour later, our producer goes in with the same request. I'm wondering if you have any properties to rent. Yes, we do. The answer is as different as his skin colour. So, as of now, there's these three properties available. Yes. Um, right. Well, one's available this weekend. Cathead's available immediately. We wonder if this is common practice in Kempsey, so Jimmy crosses the road to an agency that rents its office from the Aboriginal Land Council. Uh, Quine, you got any uh, vacancies for flats or...? Nothing at all at the moment. The only thing no I've houses? Got, the only thing I've got saying, which is a... Uh, when I uh, approached the girl, the lady behind the desk, um, I, I did notice that the gentleman walked straight down and uh, stood uh, with his back against the uh, desk, and he done all the, he done all the talking. About a week too late, actually. We had a heap of stuff last week. Uh, 20 minutes later in the same agency. Uh, at the moment, we've got three properties for rent, two houses. Uh, we asked Justine Saunders and Justice Marcus Einfeld to view these examples. He's a federal court judge and she's an actor and teacher. You could see him shoot straight across, very, very fast, before the black guy even got anywhere near the counter. The way he spoke and his body language says, we, we're not going to serve you. You probably can't afford a house anyway. It's rank discrimination. It's, it's, uh, it is uh, giving somebody an advantage or disadvantage on the grounds of their race. And uh, you're not allowed to do that. We, had a gentleman we also asked the agents Jimmy. themselves why nothing is offered to Jimmy Donovan. The, these houses that I have left are all around 140, 145, which is more money than usually. And um, these people are able to pay. You should have told the truth. To me, that was a lie. I'm not calling you a lie, but to me, that was a lie. Finally, an apology for Jimmy and an admission. Discrimination is alive and well. It's a reality of life we've all got to live with. Now, if you want to change it, that's terrific. You go ahead and do your best. We also seek some answers from that man across the road. If you're inferring that the, he was told, no, there wasn't because of its racialist, you're wrong, because I have friends people to anybody. The problem for black Australians is that prejudice and bigotry have become ingrained facts of life. How do we know? We pretend a black man and a white man have broken down two kilometres apart on the Pacific Highway. The cameras run for 20 minutes. Four people stop to help the black motorist, while just down the road, 15 people stop at the white man's car. Nearly one helper each minute. And remember, these people had to drive past the black man to stop for the white man. There's an even more extreme reaction when we try another experiment in a suburban shopping centre in Adelaide. 
Even Clary, who's used to prejudice, is shocked. We lock him out of his car to see who'll come to his aid. One person offers help, while another offers nothing but interrogation. Is that your car? Yeah. Have you called the RAA? Not yet, I'm trying, trying to. We watch as dozens of shoppers look on with suspicion. Some call the police. Someone just called us up because of their uh, tampering with the car or whatever, so they're concerned that someone else is... Have you borrowed the whole car? Or... Borrowed the car. In all, three police cars come, not from calls of help, but calls of alarm. I expected non-Aboriginal people to be a little bit more helpful. Real good Aussie butler says, what can I do for you, mate? And you're stuck, or can I help? Again, we find that having white skin in the same predicament is vastly different. No suspicion, just a rush of offers to help. That was too yes, I'm afraid so. Are you pretty good at doing it? No, I'm not, actually. Well, well, but, uh... <laughs> One of the guys in the fruit and veg shop's very good at it. Oh, is he? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. There's no logic in discrimination. There's no logic in prejudice. It's not something that you think about. It's something that you respond instinctively about. Clary also finds service in shops comes slowly sometimes or not at all. In this Adelaide leather goods store, our white customer was served with a smile. But Clary waits and waits. We time it as the shop assistant watches but ignores. Clary says Aborigines are used to it. An Aboriginal person expects to be the last person to be served. And um, we've learned to wait our turn. Our investigation shifts to Western Australia, where we try up the nightlife. At a Perth nightclub, I get in, no questions asked. But when Clary and a friend try, and both are well dressed, the bouncers reject them. In some pubs around Australia, blacks are usually expected to drink in a separate bar. At this hotel in Mullawa, Western Australia, we ask why there are two public bars. Uh, that's pretty much the Yumbi bar, you know, the back of the pub. Yumbi bar. Back of the pub. Oh, right, right. It appears not to be an enforced policy, but in many country pubs, blacks must know their place. We go back the next day, and a different bar attendant confirms much the same thing. Even getting a haircut can be a problem if you're black. Back in Adelaide, we send Clary into a salon without an appointment. Can I come back in about an hour? We're absolutely booked right out, mate. All right. No luck there, but when one of our crew goes in, he's told he can have a haircut in an hour. So Clary decides to keep trying other salons. All he wants is a haircut. Um, we don't do men, sorry. We don't do right. ladies. Okay, then. Clary goes on his way again, but we rewind the hidden camera tape, and outside that salon is a sign that says ladies and men's. So our white crewman goes in, is accepted, and is told to sit down and wait beside another male customer. And having a haircut already, is a third male customer. That was just blunt. We don't cut men's hair. It was a lie, so that would have been, as far as I can see, just only on my Aboriginality. Hello there, I wonder if I could have a word with you. When we confront the staff, they claim it's Clary's mistake, not theirs. No, I, I, I said to him, we're busy at the moment, and I I referred him to the salon around the corner because we were busy at the time. Okay. So we go back, this time with the tape from the hidden camera. Can I grab myself a haircut sometime this evening? Uh, we don't do men, sorry. We don't right. do ladies. Okay, okay, then. That girl, how could she even expect this guy to believe it? She must have taken him for an idiot. Okay. A mistake? A mistake. Yeah. Everyone makes mistakes. Sure. It just shows what a big job we have ahead of us. I dare say she's not uh, untypical of many others in the community. The average Australian does not want to admit that they're racist. They, they don't like the word. It's a dirty word. I know it exists and it's still there. And it's still underneath, still inside. 
A depressing picture, isn't it? Graham Archer reporting, and that investigation was produced by Howard Saker. And the Race Discrimination Commission is to examine the incidents you've just seen. And Aboriginal Affairs Minister Robert Tickner has urged all victims of discrimination to lay formal complaints.